All right, so today we're going to look at using uh, the Gmesh Swift Comp GUI on the CDM Hub to do a simple micromechanics problem. And to make sure we do it right, the problem we're choosing is the first problem of the micromechanics simulation challenge. First, however, we're going to find these tools starting from the CDM Hub main page. So first, we're going to find the results document for the Micromechanics Simulation Challenge. So we'll click the settings icon, and go to the search box, and we're just going to search Simulation Challenge. You'll see all the different results we get. We get four results right now, um, four pages of results, I should say. The first is the main Micromechanics Simulation Challenge project page. The second is a publication. And this is the Micromechanics Simulation Challenge Level 1 results. So we're going to go ahead and go to that page. And on the page, you have an abstract in case um, you don't feel like downloading the PDF and opening it up, or you're on mobile, or just want to see what uh, this file would be. Make sure you download the right one. And we'll download and open the PDF. So we'll find the first problem. And we're looking at the results documents so we can uh, compare our results we get right now to the results of all the tools that participated. So we'll see it's a hexagonal pack microstructure, which is a relatively common microstructure to simulate, and two sets of input material data. One for a high contrast system, say a carbon fiber and an epoxy system, and another for a low contrast system. Uh, which technically should be an easier problem uh, and should be captured by mean field uh, models more readily than the high contrast system. So for this example, we'll use set one, the carbon fiber epoxy system, which for the matrix is very close to isotropic. We could input our properties as isotropic, but I believe these input shear moduli are slightly rounded from uh, what the isotropic shear moduli would be, so we'll use them exactly as an orthotropic material. And the fiber here is very close to transversely isotropic, but I, again, I believe these input values have been rounded, uh, so we'll use them exactly as they appear here. Next, we're going to find uh, the Swift Comp uh, that we have access to on the CDM Hub. So first, we'll just search for Swift Comp. And we'll see first we have some we have some discussion posts, some project notes, but we'll go and filter to just tools. And as you see here, we've got a few different tools. We have Swift Comp Standard, or we just have GMesh, which is an, an open source mesh viewing and post processing tool. So this would be one way that you could Swift to get to Swift Comp. Additionally, going back to the home page. We can go to the menu and choose Tools. From the Tools menu, you'll be able to see the different tools available to launch, and you'll see SwiftComp on this list. And we'll just hit Launch Tool from this window. Let me make these a little larger. So you'll see that we've launched SwiftComp, and this is actually inside of the GMesh GUI. Uh, you can get more about GMesh from the menu. And additionally, if we go back to the tool page, we can look at the supporting documents and get some example problems, some case studies, um, the manual for using the GMesh for Swift Comp interface uh, for your future reference. But now we're going to go back into the GUI and start working on this problem. The first thing we need to do is create a new uh, file that will process our data with it. It has to be different than this untitled.geo file. So we'll name it challenge prob1 mat1. And we'll hit OK. Then we'll go to the materials tab choose thermoelastic 
And as I said before, we're going to input both of these properties as orthotropic. So under material name, I can rename this for my ease of reference later. Um, and I'm going to name it matrix HC for matrix high contrast because we're working the high contrast problem. And I'll just you know do the data entry here. You can input density, uh, some reference temperatures, some conductivities, uh, but those are not required to do the thermoelastic um, homogenization. So we will ignore those for now. All right, just a quick check. Yep, all these look good. We'll add it. Let's us know that it was added successfully. Now we'll change the name of the second one to fiber HC for fiber high contrast. And we'll do that data entry. And just looking at those, yep, we're good. We'll add it, lets us know that material two has been added successfully. So then we'll exit out of the material property section. And now, as I said before, the hexagonal packed array is a relatively common microstructure to deal with. And the maximum required uh, dimensionality of this, of this microstructure is 2D. So we'll choose common structured genomes and a 2D structured genome. And we're not considering a beam section, we're considering something different. So we'll choose other 2D structured genomes. And built in, there's a square pack microstructure and a hexagonal pack microstructure. So we'll choose that. The volume fraction of the fiber in this case is 0 0.6. We're not modeling an interface, so we'll leave that set as zero. We'll choose our fiber material, our matrix material, and hit add. At this point, we've created the geometry and we've assigned material properties since we're using a common structured genome. Uh, if you happen to think that you need to do more, say, assign the periodicity for this model, you could go to periodicity and hit 2D structured genome, and it will let you know that everything for the common models is already taken care of, and you do not need to define additional periodicity for the common model. Next thing we have to do is mesh it. We'll use the default settings to generate a 2D mesh. Gmesh will automatically generate a, um, a mesh with periodic nodes. You can choose to do local refinements if you want, but we will not do that for this example. Now we're ready to do Swift Comp. So we'll go to homogenization and we'll go to the solid model. And the first thing we're going to do is just see if we're getting the elastic parameters right. So we'll choose elastic, regular elements, global coordinate system, and uniform temperature, although we're not applying a temperature in this case. We'll save those inputs, and we'll run the analysis. What will appear is, if everything was set up correctly, is the outputs of the homogenization. So you'll get the stiffness matrix, the compliance matrix, and then the engineering constants as if the material were an orthotropic material. In this case, we have an orthotropic material. Uh, so this, these are exact. You know, most of our off-diagonal terms are zero or at least minimal. Um, so we can take these values and we can compare them now to the values predicted uh, by other tools in the Micromechanics Simulation Challenge. So we'll look down at the benchmark example, which is the 3D FEA. So this is done by setting up this model uh, in an FEA tool, repeated multiple times, and then with uh, periodic boundary conditions applied to it. So we see we're relatively close. The E1 of the 3D FEA is 167.33. This is 166.69, and then we have 10.67, we have 10.69 here for E2 and E3. Um, then the G12 
of that 3D FBA is 6.38, we get 6.39, and again 6.40 for G13 and 3.35 for G23, where the 3D FBA got 3.33. And our Poisson's ratios are a relatively close match as well. 0 0.312, 0 0.312, and 0.599. Going back to our model, by just closing this window, making sure that we still have the same model open, we can choose to do a dehomogenization run. So we'll choose solid model again. And in this window, you'll see options, uh, optional arguments to pass in. If I were to then use my homogenized results in a full part simulation and I wanted to go and receive the local displacements as well as the local stress field, I would need to both input the local the the global displacements of that material point, the global direction cosine matrix of that material point, as well as the global strains. Since we don't have a real model that we're running this off of, we're going to leave the input displacements as zero, the input uh, direction cosines is the identity matrix, meaning the global coordinate system, and we'll apply a unit uh, epsilon 1, 1 strain. We'll save that input file, and we will run the analysis, and we can see uh, we get an output for the displacements, but these are then relative displacements. To get the actual displacements in the whole model, you would still need uh, to do some additions of the global displacements and rotations to this. We can visualize the strain field. So here's the uniformly applied um, because of the planar symmetry epsilon 1, 1. In this case, 1, 1 is the z direction, it is the out of plane direction. 2, 2, meaning the x direction, as far as the, the visual window says. 3, 3, the y direction, as far as the window says. Then the strain, or the shear strains. And finally, the stresses. And you see the simple check of the E11 uh, applied strain, and then the S11 resulting stresses is we have extremely high stress in the fibers and very low stress in the matrix. Almost, almost equal to simply a unit times the E1s of the, of the materials we were dealing with. All right, so if we want to go back and analyze and homogenize to our um, coefficients of thermal expansion, one thing we need to take note of is the fact that we're now in a different .geo file. When the dehomogenization is performed and these outputs are created, they're saved into a new file and reopened. Um, in this way, it creates a relatively large file uh, because it contains all of the output data at the nodes or in the integration points. And so we need to go back and open our original file, challenge prob one mat one dot geo. We'll go ahead and open it back up. Um, we'll generate the mesh again since we did not save after the mesh was generated. And we'll go to solid model and this time we're going to choose thermoelastic. Save, we'll replace the file that already existed, and hit run. In addition to the engineering constants that were shown before, now we have thermal coefficients, as well as um, some other outputs that we didn't exactly provide inputs for. So we'll compare this to the 3D FEA results from the simulation challenge. We see those are point 405. This is 0.417 for alpha 1, 35.1, and we have 35.2, and again 
point three for alpha two two and alpha three three. So you can see even with the relatively coarse mesh that we were that we are using this mesh right here we are using for this analysis and how quickly it runs on the CDM hub we still get very close results we wanted to get res get better results all the way up to the benchmark swift comp results that are shown in the in the simulation challenge document we would need to do some mesh refinements until we have a converged result all right with that done that's the end of this video and thank you for your attention